What are the top 10 romantic comedies of the 21st century? Yes, tis the season to be lovely. And whether you're doing, giving yourself some self-love because you're not in a relationship or you're having some time with a loved one, we don't judge. But what we are going to tell you are some fun romantic movies to watch right now on Movie Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Hey, screeners, how you doing? It's me, the one AJ, Anthony Jordan. And me, Nicole Leroux, and I apologize that we haven't been on our podcast for a few weeks. Daughter had chicken pox. Hey, I'm a dad, sue me, it's a thing. But we're back, and we're back just in time for Valentine's Day. Just in time. Just, just in, in time. time. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, so, yes, good to have you back, bro, and we are back. Now, before we get into, into the mood of season seven, like, past the February, do you like the new design? Do you like it? Is it cool? Have you got your sunshades on? And yeah, loving the glare, because I'm loving the glare. It's all about a bit of Naomi, loving the glow. Anyway, <laughs> we take it to this level, and we're going to say, for anyone who's not seen the movie Matt Rushmore before, would you like to tell them what it's all about? Yes, basically, it's a top 10 show between two best friends from school. You can download it up there on Spotify. Up there. Hmm? Yes, up there. Ha <laughs> ha. Like in this corner. You can download it on Spotify. Uh, it is season seven. If you are a podcast listener, we've been doing this a long time now, AJ. I still have memories of mine. I used to say season three. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, season seven in. And here's how the show works for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Uh, we each get it. We get us on the topic we go our separate ways we compile our list separately and we come right back here into our recording and deliver to you our film family the silver screen dudes our individual top tens this week aj will go first delivering his bottom three i will then deliver my bottom three aj will deliver his next two i will deliver my next two and then when we get to our top five we will trade one a piece if at any time while we are running off our individual top ten list one person has a movie in high position the person will say punt and we will punt and get to that and talk about that movie when we get to the higher position once we have both rounded off our individual top 10 list we will create in the voice of the dearly departed matthew perry as chandler bing the movie mount rushmore these are the four quintessential diverse musty movies of the genre which there's where it is top 10 romantic comedies of the 21st century so that means from 2000 all the way up until 2024 so you've got 24 years worth of good films here well it kind of wins but yeah you get the point anyway before we get into that, what happens after we, the Silver Screen Dude, create the four must-see movies? It gets even harder because the challenge goes over to you, the screeners, where you have to get laser-focused and you have to crown El Capitan, El Numero Uno, the best of the best, the King of Kings. The best of the best with honours, sir, the King of Kings. And to quote Highlander, in the end, there can be only one and how do you crown the one well it's quite simple you head on over to x and you head on over to at movie mt rushmore the official x page of the silver screen dudes but more importantly you head on over to the person that re-retweet at movie polls for you fronted by good old jt of we love movies and that's where you get to vote and you only get one vote because it's a retweet so there's no cheat in there now what was our topic last week or a few weeks back few weeks back, our topic, our last topic of fanery was the best Western movies. And the contenders were? Don't bring the posters up. I deleted one. That's my bad. I was going to uh, say, sugar, I can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. my bad. Our contenders were uh, The Magnificent Seven, There Will Be Blood, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Now, fun fact, every single movie got over 10% this week. So it's seemingly close. You know, normally there's one that takes a pounding. Every movie got over 10% and there was still an absolute storming in this list. I'm going to go based off of... This is hard. I'm... Yes, it is. Very. I'm going to go for what I feel is... You've got your westerns, which people are going to think of, and then you've got There Will Be Blood, which is such so far down in, in from the category where the others are falling into. It's weird. And it's weird because I always feel like There Will Be Blood isn't known, but then every time I bring it up, there's more people who know it. So I, it's, it's a weird one. It's just how I stumbled across it. 
there's two films I feel are in that category. One I feel is a lesser movie, but one's a newer movie. I'm going to go with There Will Be Blood in fourth. No. Okay. Okay. Magnificent Seven. Oh, she's. I know, right? Butch Cassidy? Butch Cassidy came in last. Got 15%. That hurt. The next two, draw. Equal percentage. Oh, so then Butch is third as opposed to fourth. Yes, but still last. Mm. Yeah, to, to be fair, it's the same two I couldn't I contended with earlier. Magnificent Seven and There Will Be Blood. Yeah. Magnificent Seven and There Will Be Blood both got 19%. The good, the bad, and the ugly crushed 47%. It's the definition of a Western, though, isn't it? That I mean, like, yeah, it, it's the definition of a West. It just is. It just is. You I would like to it. know what would have been contenders for it. Possibly Django, original, over Unchained. Um, who knows? Oh, who knows? That film. Oh, that film. Who knows? Interesting. I'm intrigued. I'm actually intrigued to be what would, what are contenders? Because I really, I mean, okay, Magnificent Seven is in second place, but I'm still intrigued. Anyway, we digress. I don't think you can beat Clint Eastwood, to be honest. There's a couple of Wayne fans out there, though, isn't it? But I don't know. To me, it's Clint. But yeah, To me, it's Clint know. as well. Used to be. Now it's Django. <laughs> um, All right, man. You're number 10. In at number 10 was a film that, had you asked me this maybe six years ago, probably would have been my number one. I was all over this film. Loved it from top to bottom. John Cusack, Kate Beckinsale, Serendipity. I've never seen it. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's literally like a film of fate. It's literally a film about fate. They, um, ooh, it goes back a while now. But Kate Beckinsale and John Cusack are actually in separate relationships, but they happen to meet each other somewhere and they, they just connect and they're like, this is mad. Like we are really getting on, but they're like, but it's not right. It's not this. And they, they, they decide to take this, this whole <laughs> level of fate and they bring up serendipity. What is serendipity? A miraculous event that happens out, out of chance. And they take a book and they write the contact details in this book. John Cusack puts his contact details in this book and drops it in a second hand shop or something like that. And that's what happens. And it's like, if we're meant to be, you will find this book and you will be able to contact me. And this whole throughout the film, it's a case of, you can see Kate Beckinsale is with her partner, is very close to getting engaged, or she's engaged, very close to getting married, but it's always a moment of looking for this book and he can't forget her. And it's just a case of, will they or won't they? And it's just chance. And there's rotations of the, had the book, but this has happened and that's changed. It's absolutely nuts. And I really loved it. Until I showed it to someone. Now, if you saw Silver Screen News, you'll see that we talk about showing the film to someone and they how they appreciate it. Someone said a line to me that made me go, oh, you're right. And I've never been able to watch it the same ever since. And it was like, but isn't he a bit of a scumbag for doing that while he's got a partner? And I was like, oh, I was like but, it, but it was like, oh, God, you're right. I still really like the film, but the dirt was the dirt. And I'm like, yeah, they are kind of dirty for that. And it, I, I, for the love yeah, I have, for the love film. and things are more nuanced and simple social etiquette. I'm afraid, but yeah, yeah. But it, it kind of, it kind of dented me. And for all the love I've always had, and like, there's a mo the ending moment. It warms me up forever. And I'm like, oh my god, I was like, oh sugar, you're kind of right. Mm. You're kind of right. So yeah, I had a good laugh with it. It's not like it, it's it's from it's more romantic than comedy, but it has its comedy sides to it as well. But yeah. It's been tainted. Can't right? comment, but it sounds fun. Yeah, it no, it's like, I, I would recommend seeing it. I would recommend yeah. seeing it. Um, in at number nine, this is a weird one because at first, its original was going to be my number two. <laughs> and then when I went to the third of this franchise, I was like, this is more romantic comedy, but it's not as funny. Can you, get, can you guess where I'm going? Not really, no. American oh. Pie the Wedding. Now I was like, Good child. Yeah, like the journey, like essentially for all of I just want to get laid, 
you could make American Pie <laughs> a romantic comedy, for better or worse, but very <laughs> loose. Very this loose. is a better choice. This, this is, is a it. So in order to make it a real romantic comedy, all of the madness has happened. We've got from I get laid to I really like this girl to I have a chance to reconnect with the other one. But actually, this is the girl I like. This is it. Jim is it. Jim is connected. He knows that it's Michelle that he's after. This is it. There is no forget Nadia. Forget it all. He's about like they've grown up. He's gonna do it. It's not as funny as the first two. I remember watching it and being slightly disappointed because one did not miss two was like whoa three i was a bit wavered on but it's a romantic comedy nonetheless it, it it's the, it's the gang growing up and taking that next step it's like i saw my boy do that gentleman right there i saw him do it i was the best man for that you know it was a nice moment and you kind of feel it with this you kind of watch the film and you're like the boys have grown up oh my god i don't believe it but it's part of it and it, it's it's got its moments. You can see where it's like Jim is still screwing up in order to just do the best by his wife. Like there are moments that again, I don't like to quote scenes to spoil scenes if you've not seen it. But if you follow Jim's journey, you're like, oh, you're still making mistakes. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's a nice film, but it, it can't hit like the others do. I, I really like that you thought to put that in there, and a franchise that's very near and dear to us, of course. Definitely the most tame of the of the three. Even even yeah. even the reunion decided to up the ante up, up a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what's your eight? In at number eight. Now this was a one time watch, and I, I'm gonna be very sketchy on how much I can quote it. But I remember watching it. I believe it was on Channel Five, and laughing my rear end off, and I was like. This is funny. And I feel like this is where we kind of lose a bit of like connection with comedy. And then comedy came back pretty strong with this one. But it's not overly rated from what I know. Couples Retreat. I will defend you until the day I die on this movie. I wasn't I ready for it. Love it. I feel like it's a sleeper movie. It so is. It's a couple who have got some marital problems and their counsel they go to a counselor, the couple of the counselor says like go on holiday from what I remember. And with that, I think they either invite some friends or they invite one set of friends and they meet another oh, couple. Oh, I've them. seen this movie many times. Let me fill you in. Please do. Jason Bateman, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell, Kristen Wiig, I always get them mixed up. Is it Jason Bateman? It's Jason Bateman. I thought it was Vince Vaughn in this one, no? He's also in it. Wait, oh, we're right, getting okay. there. Uh, that's just going to annoy me. Bear with me one moment. I want to know which Christian it is. Sorry, I'm IMDb. That was right. That's Stuart, Christian in... Stewart from um, Stuart from Sex in the City fame. Is it? I'm sure it's her, no? Mm. Far right, red dress. Of what? Far right, wait, wait. Not her. Oh, Far yeah. left. Next to I Jason Bateman. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now I see Bateman again. I put the post off, and I couldn't remember that. <laughs> but the other ones are Kristen as well, is she not? Uh, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's not get drawn into this. Anyway, Jason Bateman couple are having trouble conceiving a baby. So right, they say that one of the things they've been advised is to go to romantic location, yada 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 yada, and they just so happen to have numerous tickets, right? And so they take their friends with them. Friends being made up of Vince Vaughn and Marlon Ackerman, uh, Kristen Stewart and uh, John Favreau. So we've got Kristen Davis is with John Favreau and Kristen, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. With... Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, John Favreau's there. And they essentially go to beautiful Bora Bora. And there's, there's this... Big brother too, but I don't think no, he's particularly famous. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah, um, but yeah, they all go to this couple's retreat, and what they realize by being in this place where one of the mandatory requirements for enjoying the jet skis and the food and the surroundings is you must do therapy. It is literally a couple's retreat. You will come and fix your problems, but then what they all start to realize is. They actually have problems they weren't aware of, so they become very resentful about being in paradise. Q, brilliant comedy, couple 
dynamics which if you've ever been in a serious relationship there will be one thing in here that you can relate to big brother man having a divorce having a rebound with a girl who should be his daughter in terms of her age john favreau completely lost the spark in his relationship no sex anymore vince vaughn seemingly everything's good but they don't have that much of an emotional connection anymore and jason bateman is basically a stepford man like everything has to be robotic and organic to the degree that it completely alienates his wife and they obviously reconcile at the end oh there's a nice little cameo from jean renault in this too which is uh, which makes me laugh um but it's they end up in a place where every couple would be in, you know, on cloud nine and having to face real problems. And listen, I've been in a few serious relationships. Yeah, I'm married now. That's serious. But like, I've been in prior to that other serious relationships. And even then I was watching this going, I can legit relate to a few of these things. Yeah. It's relatable. Now, I'm, I'm with you. I know it gets panned. I'll stand on this hill with you alone. I like this movie. I had, I remember being like, this is amazing. And it's actually a sin that I've only watched it once because of how much I loved it. I was oh, like, this is like, double honestly, digits, bro. It, yeah, like, double digits. you know what? You know, it's rare that you watch a film and you're like, this is gold, but you've not had a chance to rewatch it. It's, I, I honestly rec can't recommend it enough. And had I seen it, well, there's more, an upcoming top 10 list, AJ, which this might fit quite nicely into. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'll rewatch the list, but yeah, I will rewatch it because, oh yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's a sleeper movie. It I is. Think it's a try and shape. Like, had I seen it more guaranteed it'd be higher because I laughed my head off with this film. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, I, yeah, well done for, I'm, I'm, I remembered it at the eleventh hour, but looking at my list, I was like, "Oh, what do I Where take off?" Yeah, yeah. A great film. I, I'm with you. I really, really love it. My number ten. It's a British classic. We bring it up a lot. You bring it up more than I do, but now it's my turn. Bridget Jones' Diary. You uh, can't... that is a punt. <laughs> Very good. Uh, my number nine, this is probably what, if I were to put Couples with Cheat on, I'd likely take this out, but this is a first-time watch for me, and it's not one I've discussed before, so I wanted to bring it in for edutainment's sake. Really good. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So here's the thing. Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Couples Retreat, it was one or the other. It was no, one good. or the other. We balanced each other out. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, forgetting Sarah Marshall is great. So, Sarah Marshall is hot little blondie here, played by Kristen. What's her face from Couples Retreat? Bell, 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 Kristen yeah. Bell. Yes, Kristen Bell here. She in this story is like mega famous TV star. Thinks she's about to break into the movies. She's dating the guy who does the music composition for her TV show. Played by, oh, he plays Marshall Erickson in How I Met Your Mother. Why am I blanking on him here? Big man. Lurch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why am I blanking on him? Come on. It's not that late. I mean, it's quite late. But why am I blanking on movie names tonight? I'm sorry, guys. Bear with Jason, me. That's Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. What the blob is wrong Bro, with that's me? Too Don't worry. I had to. I had Jeez. To, yeah. Yeah, so she, her and Jason Siegel are dating, and the beginning of the movie just kind of shows that he's very kind of chill in life. You know, he's the type of guy who will work on his own projects, but his, the scope of his day, if he's not working on the TV show, is eating a ginormous bowl of Lucky Charms and playing Guitar Hero. There's a throwback for you. Um, and she basically, within the first few minutes of the movie, he sets up that they're a perfect couple, except they're not. Hence the title of the movie. Uh, she dumps him and she runs off with Russell Brand, who's this very hot, sexy, all white singer. And they end up going to Turtle Cove in Hawaii. He kind of can't get over her, goes with her um, and runs into someone who I didn't realize I have a mega crush on in Mila Kunis. Come on, bro. We've all seen Black Swan. How can you say that? Bro, I don't... No, no. I've seen Black Swan. I appreciated what I saw. I've got a 
serious crush on Mila Kunis. Like I, like I wasn't aware of. I think because for me, she's been Meg for so long, I don't associate <laughs> her as hot anymore. <laughs> but then when you see, she's not even anywhere near as sexy in this as she is in Black Swan. You know, she's in a suit working in the hotel for most of the time. But I saw, I was like, oh, me, hello. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And Ashton for a day. She, it's really endearing because she very quickly realizes what's happened to him. The fact that he's been dumped unceremoniously and possibly cheated on. She doesn't have a room for him. So she comps him and gets him to stay in the hotel to kind of get back at Sarah Marshall. And the two of them do what starts as kind of malicious vengeance kind of blossoms into something else. And of course you see where this is going. Sarah Marshall regrets what she lost and Russell Brand turns out to be the world's biggest douchebag, kind of true to life. Um, and yeah, it's 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 really sweet. It's a it's a fun little movie. Hidden gem nice. as well. It's nice. Yeah, it is. It is. They are the two that I've kind of balanced and I was like, it's one or the other. And yeah, I went with I went with by the way, Jason Siegel, tremendous cock. Like <laughs> within the first three minutes of this movie, man's fully naked. I'm like, whoa, okay. Did you expect that? Human <laughs> tripod. Good for you. <laughs> well done, bro. Well done. Good for you, brother. You know, normally you see and these just, giant, just giant guys, and it's like kind of that vibe. And it's like, oh no, you're one of those big hand mother flubbers, aren't you? <laughs> um, okay. and just for the benefit of those who are familiar with original. OG silver screen dudes. Yes, this is a hashtag. The penis got me moment. <laughs> the penis got me. There you go. The penis literally got me. Uh, that one's for Gavin and Francis. Enjoy that. Uh, my my number eight again. We're bringing up a lot. Second entry from Hugh Jackman after the punt. Oh, oh Grant, not Jackman. Grant Notting Hill. I. Ooh, I don't want to be that guy. Is it's it not? not... I think it's 99. Is it actually? Sure if I it is, Googled I'll put it. in couples retreat. I'm pretty sure I Googled it uh, and it's 99. If it is, well played. You've 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 got me. 1999. Well done. Cool. <laughs> couples retreat. Cool. Punt. Done. <laughs> We're back. We're back in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're number Very three. awesome film though. Yeah. That nearly made my list as well because I was like there and I'm pretty yeah, I remember Googling it and I was like snap right in at number seven this is one of these ensemble movies that i that i really i really dug and i remember watching it once and i really watched it again just the other day um oh, i've got a problem my other movie is 1999 as well god damn it carry okay. on okay carry on. i will fix this problem yeah so in at number seven for me i don't know if you've seen it some people might call it cheesy but i really enjoyed it he's just not that into you Seen it? I'm How to it. lose a guy in ten days? He's just not that into you. How to? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, he's I never got into this you. kind of weird. No, movie. how to lose a guy in ten days is very different. Very different. He's just not that into you to me because that is because this one you think it's the 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 by the title you'll think it's the like how to lose a guy in 10 days where she plays one way, she's then seen as a startler and gets away with the guy. Is that what you're picturing mm -hmm. this film to be? Mm -hmm. Very far from. Very okay. far from. It's a case of, you've got Jennifer Goodwin as like your main narrator to this story. And it talks about how... Found the movie. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it talks about how you, um, as, as a young girl, you, you get hurt by a guy and instead of just embracing that the fact that this guy could be a pain in the ass, oops, I tried to avoid it and I still said it, a pain in the rear or a real douche, you 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 have your mum tell you the first lie that you have to accept as a woman and it's, do you know why he bullied you? It's because he likes you. And now you've got this fantasy of second guessing what a guy is about. And then there is always these stories that a woman knows. And it's a case of, oh, um, yeah, this happened to you, but I have this one friend and this happened to her and then they got married and live happily ever after. So don't give up just yet. And it's literally all based on that. And what she then does is she has a date with this guy who's really... 
to the Miz. He's one of those kind of jock type guys who's all like all about himself, yeah. talks about himself, this and the other. But she kind of is into him, and he's like, "I'll call you." One of those and guys who thinks he's awesome, but he's not. He, yeah, look, he's not. He's not that bad, but he, you can see he's kind of self invested in her in the thing, and it's like, "I'll call you." And then she's like, two days, three days. She doesn't see him. She goes to a bar, and at that bar, it's where she's. She they last met, and she's like, I'm looking for this guy. And she's like, I'm not there. But who she answers the barman who's Justin Long, who happens to be this guy's close friend. He's like, I do love Justin Long. Justin Long's pretty cool, and that's the thing. So he now becomes like her guru because he's like, Right, he's not meant to be here. I can give him a call. She's like, Oh no. Um, that she she fakes it that she's got she's got something to give him, and it's like, okay, I could call him. No, no, it's cool. He goes, Okay, give it to me, I'll give it to him. What is it? She's like, uh, this pen, and it's like a pen. He's like, you're obviously here to try and meet this guy. But let me tell you something. If he hasn't called after this time, he's just not like into you. And now he kind of becomes like her guru <laughs> into like understanding men. She'll be on a date. She's now going to phone him like, so a guy's done this. What does this mean? And then from that, that's her story. But each way you now see how Justin Long connects with people and how he handles the relationship. That, that guy that we said is a bit douchey is majorly in love with Scarlett Johansson but she's not interested in him. And it's all these different ways of like how people use each other and fool themselves into believing a relationship could be something or another and the hope and knowing when to give up or not to give up and stuff like that. Really fun film. Okay. Yeah, it's not the how to lose a guy in 10 days kind of stuff. Okay. Fair, 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 fair. Cool. So that was my number seven. In at number six... Oh, I dare I say, I believe this is either in similar territory or as a punt, because my first of two showings of good old Steve Carell, the 40-year-old virgin. Punt? I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Man said six, you know. <sighs> the others, it's just that I've seen the others more. Remember, the 40-year-old virgin is a really, it's weird. I had a lot of love for it at one point because ITV2 kept banging it out, and it's faded to me, so it's a bit of a... Yeah, it's a bit of a different one. Even though Cardiff, we definitely played a 40-year-old virgin game. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I can't remember what it was, but I got, then I think it was hey, like, oh, <laughs> So bad. I can't remember either, but we we're like, well played. Even he was like, yeah, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that game. Jesus Christ. You know, they've got a whole, there, there's there's like a whole montage of of them that doing, uh, of Seth and um, Paul, like doing it from another movie where it's just in like a deleted scene outtake, but it goes on for like five minutes. And it, and it's all kind of like freestyle a cappella. It's freaking great, man. I need to check that. Oh, do you know how I know you're gay? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because you just told me you don't sleep with girls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how I know you're gay? You like cold play. <laughs> <laughs> You know, okay. You mac, you macrimated yourself a pair of jean shorts. <laughs> it's like the weirdest stuff. You know, I know. Again, okay. it's oh, right. but the, silver, the silver screen dudes <laughs> slash the ministry had a very fun game of that oh, on the way to and from Cardiff. It was yeah, it was hey. Clash oh, of the castle will be forever remembered for that. But yes, oh, we move on. That, that was that my one. Yeah, so you're seven oh. in. My number seven, the one that came to me. I was going to go with Will Smith, but I remembered. I thought Will Smith, I was going to go. I'm guessing you might have it, so I won't say the name. But I was going to go Will Smith, and then I thought Smith. Ah, Kevin Smith. And then I remembered. Zach and Miri make a porno. I, do you know what? In a weird sense, I remember watching the beginning of this film. Hey, Doug Judy. Sorry. Um, yeah, I can't. Rem- I can't remember why I've not seen the end of this film. So fun, dude! It, it, it's very, very, very catered to a Kevin Smith audience. Like, if you're not already a Kevin Smith fan, 
this is not the movie to put you onto his body of work. If you like Clerks and you like Dogma, and then you were like, oh, let me check out Mole Rats and Chasing Amy, and now you're like, I need some more Kevin Smith, then this is your movie. If you've never watched a Kevin Smith movie, start with Dogma. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> Even Dogma's loopy. Start with Dogma or Clerks. But Zach and Mary make a porno, so two lifelong platonic friends played by Elizabeth Banks. Oh, Elizabeth Banks. Played by Elizabeth Banks and Seth Rogen financial problems and they go to this big school reunion where they find it funny enough run into justin long that must have been a subconscious trigger you gave me a moment ago they run into justin long who turns out does porn and tells them how he makes really good money and then them and friends with jason muse who's one of, who's in kevin basically in kevin all of kevin smith's movies um craig robinson he from you know daryl from the office Yes, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah. yeah, and a load of like, you know, kind of not backup dancers, but very much side character type actors are all in this brilliant ensemble where they all have financial problems and they all get into porn. But while making this porno and breaking their platonic vows and it goes from being platonic to kind of platonish, feelings develop. But are they there? Aren't they there? Is it all the mirror? Is it all a, a an optical illusion of the camera? What's real? What isn't real? Is porn? Can, can you fall in love over porn? And it just it asks a lot of really, I think, necessary questions about about pornography in general. Both how it can be both an evil vice, but also how it's possibly over tabooized within a very specific frame. Um, but yeah, it ah, oh, I see what you've just put up there. This is good too. Oh, um, oh, oh, don't, don't get excited about that. <laughs> no, that fall oh, oh, bro. No, oh, I hate it anyway. Did you? Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Zach and Mary make a porno is my seven. Oh no. <gasps> You're about to do to me what I did to you a moment ago. AJ, my number six is crazy stupid love. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's a pun that's a pun man said six you know <laughs> <laughs> all right you're number five okay my number five so it's a pun from earlier one that's been spoken to about Ooh, hi. Joseph's diary um why it's so high is because there's just an era of comedy and films that i remember replay until like the dvd wore out and bridget jones is one of them and it's funny because like i do tend to blur between bridget jones and bridget jones's edge of reason like what happened in this scene what happened in that film a lot but i there's something that i really appreciate about renee zellweger becoming bridget jones i just co I, i've never read a bridget jones book or anything like that but i think she absolutely there's books bridget jones's diary has started off as a book i had no idea Kudos. Yeah, they were, they were actual books. Yeah, it was something, and they made the film. And I think she just owns it. Like she for does. a lady, I, I, some people could be like. I, I, sometimes I could be a bit crap when it comes to accents. Like, oh, that. I feel she became a British lady. I, I, she. Oh, she, I doubt to it. Me, I really enjoy it. Like I know some people are like, oh, that's a crap accent, but I, I, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't go I that like far. I, I, you know, it didn't take me out, but I, I, I you know. She never became Mary Poppins, put it that way. Well, no, I mean, yeah, I mean it, dep it depends on the angle of British we're talking. Yes, yeah, so if, if one's going to speak like you know, one has tea with the Queen, then yes, one, one would expect to, you know, to go she down. Wasn't there. Stifler's mum in Legally Blonde either, but you know, oh, no, exactly, yeah, yeah, but like you know, yeah, oh god, Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge, even when she done it in Bloody Friends, I know that was meant to be the joke, but yeah, she did it in Friends, didn't she? Yeah, bugger. <laughs> I caught me on my mobile. <laughs> She's absolutely hilarious. But no, I really just love everything that Bridget, just your everyday woman with a fantasy of the hot guy who is forever pursued by this weird dork of another side. And just trying to live life in her mid-30s. And it just works. Trying to struggle with love, career, strange relationship with parents, one who's modelly coddling too much, one who 
sympathizes but could be a bit stuck. like it all works there's just something about bridget that just works there um, is yeah. listen I'll, I'll say this bro like the the story that bridget goes through has now become very much a non-gender story because back then it was like what's it like to be a single woman in the big city but like you look at people who are 10 years younger than us like louis bless him you know he tells me all sorts of story you know who's been on the channel before he's 27 28 now He's told me all sorts of stories about how difficult it is to meet people after the rise of, you know, love data, essentially, you know, your relationship will now be reduced to nothing more than a swipe left or right. Yeah. And then yeah. that's created the atmosphere of people literally. Like, do you feel that you would be, I'm not saying if you would be confident enough, but how well do you think it would be received if you just went up to someone in a bar and spoke to them now it's, you know? it's, it's such a weird thing that that organic not, bro, i'd be afraid to just touch someone on the arm without them going what are you doing it's like yeah. chill yeah. you could you could be me too in like a minute like you know um, what i mean and guys are afraid I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not using the term lightly it's, it's a fact that you can you may seem as some form of a predator just by trying to shoot your shot you know yeah no ill intent but yeah. you tell me no i'm i'm gone but they can have you in this kind of Oh my god, he done this, he said that. Like it's very difficult now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And men, men, I believe, have become afraid of that. And I'm not looking for anyone to play me a violin here and be like, no. oh, poor men. It's like not at all. But I'm just saying the dynamic of trying to chat the a person up now. Yeah. But the balance is shifted, but yet the onus is still on the man to make the first move. That hasn't shifted, you know. Right. Listen, right. I've had I can count them on one hand, but I've had women chat me up in my life before and made the first move. And I thought it was monumentally sexy. And, you know, they all scored. Lucky them. Lucky me, too. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, I, I've never mind bothered had an issue making the first move back when I was single. Um, I imagine I'd struggle a bit now. Like. It's a hard world out there trying to engage with someone not through a screen. So this story of Bridget Jones weirdly has become kind of relevant to the Gen Zers. And it's mm. not even about what's it like to be a single woman in the city. It's kind of now like, what's it like to be about to be 30 and be a single person in the big city of London? Yeah. So it, it, it's, 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 it's lasted the test of time, not through any like kind of, you know, foresight or brilliant writing, but just through circumstance. I'll give you and that. This, and this movie has got one of the all-time great fight scenes. I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> Had to be mentioned the greatest fight scene. Outside. Though. What do you mean outside? Should I bring my swords or my dueling pistols? <laughs> <laughs> Absolute gold. Absolute gold. Yeah. Swords or dueling pistols? It's a fight! A real fight! <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Okay, that was my five. Over to you. A true out of nowhere gem of a movie that propelled its lead to absolute star status overnight. From what I hear, kind of semi autobiographical of what happened to him, Kumal Nanjani in The Big Sick. See, this Hunter, came up. Ray Romano, Zoe Kazan. This movie charmed me to my absolute core. So, Kumal Nanjani is an Uber driver, and he's also an aspiring stand-up comedian. He gets kind of heckled by this girl in the in the in the in the comedy club, but it's not a heckle; like she's actually going along with his joke. She's like, "Yeah," like supporting him, but that's cutting him off while he's saying the joke. And he sort of comes up to perfectly deadpan afterwards and go, "You really shouldn't heckle comedian." She's like, "Well, I was cheering you, not heckling you." He was like, "That's interesting, but cheering when I'm trying to have total silence until I tell you to laugh is a form of heckling." So they've got this really, really good, organic, lovely back and forth and instant chemistry. Anyway, they sleep together. Um, he then shares the fact that he's got quite a, a hard line Pakistani family who may not approve of a white girl, you know, um, that's just what it is in the film. And funnily enough, the mother from, um, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel. Oh, okay. So Miss Marvel's mother and also her older brother, they both got their breakout roles in this film too. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you can tell there's some very, very good pedigree here amongst the Asian actors. And 
Yeah, so so Kumail is trying to lead this double life where he's like, oh, yes, I'm a good mummy's boy. I'm a good mummy's boy. I come home every Sunday. I do my prayers. Mm -hmm. I'm on my phone while I'm praying. But, you know, he's giving the facade that he's being a good Pakistani boy while just trying to be a New Yorker, man. Like, just let me live. So he's kind of leading a double life as far as his parents are concerned. He's reluctant to bring this new girl over and she kind of can't get her head around the cultural fracas that it would cause. So they go their separate ways. But then she ends up out of nowhere, like literally out of nowhere in a coma. And it's like, huh? But they've broken up at this point. So he ends up in this weird position of it's like, well, we're not together, but like, Yo, I got you. What the hell's happened? She obviously she's out cold for all of this. So her parents, Ray Romano and Holly Hunter, show up. They've heard that Kumal and her have split up, and they're very like, stay away from our daughter for now. But he's like, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, we split up, but like, I, I still, still really like her, and I don't want to see her going through this. Anyway, the parents and him form a bond and get like the father and him have got an amazing relationship. And he kind of sticks around until she wakes up. But now, now here's where the interesting dynamic comes in. He's made all the efforts, made sure that she's being looked after, done everything right by her parents, tried to look after them while they're in the city coming in from wherever it was. But she wakes up. She didn't experience any of this. Last interaction she had with Kumail, he hurt her. So while he's been there for her emotionally and available wise, expecting that everything's going to be rosy when she wakes up, she's like, nah, bro, you hurt me. Like, no, I don't care what you did while I was asleep. This, this isn't a thing. And this is the story that unfolds. Do they or don't they end up back together? How does it play out? It's really quite brilliant. It's, I need to give the film a second shot because I remember, you see sometimes, again, even like the serendipity and stuff like that, sometimes you don't have to be laugh out loud comedy to be a romantic No, it's comedy. not laugh out loud comedy. It's more romantic than comedy. And yep. I remember watching it and I was like, I'm not laughing. And this was just literally <laughs> yeah. in the heckling scene and just beyond, just after. And I was like, I don't think this is for me. And I've cut off. But it sounds That's like good. a really good story. It's really good. It's, it came up a lot. It did come up yeah. a lot when I was like, you know those have I forgotten anything kind of moments. It came up a lot and I was like, I just I just didn't have the time. I genuinely it's not going to put you in stitches the way some of these are. It doesn't have a standout, you know, fight scene from Bridget Jones moment or, you know, or, or I know how I know you're gay. It doesn't, it doesn't have any of that. But it, the chemistry between these two is ineffable. Uh, it, it's You tune in for Kumail and for Zoe, like it's really good. Nice, nice. I will give it a shot. I will give it a shot. You're number four. This is the guilty pleasure. This is a guilty pleasure, but I would oh, not be homage. Go on. What we got? Yeah, of course, it is. It's the biggest homage. But when it comes to it, this is the one film that I have twice on DVD. I say it all the time, and anytime something around romantic comedy comes up, it will come up. She's meant to be a pain in the rear to work with, but it's Catherine Heigl in Twenty Seven Dresses. It's just my. My, my real, like, I shouldn't admit to it being my film the way it is, but it is. Is Cameron it's Diaz one... also in this? No. Um, oh, Cyclops. James Marsden? Yeah, no, I've not seen this. Yeah. So the whole story is that she is, like, forever, a, literally forever a bridesmaid, never a bride. She has been a bridesmaid to 27 different women and she's always wore you know she's all the different styles and she's always been there and the ultimate organizer and she's madly in love with her boss and then it all comes out into this thing where she wants to get with him but coincidentally her sister comes from out of town and he's the one that's the one that her boss falls for but while they're going through this and she's becoming like she's gone from one party to another and she's talking to this cab driver something or the other because she's doing one wedding and another both being the the bridesmaid James Marsden, as a reporter, finds out that there's this woman who has been everything I've just described. So he's now trying to get to know her and do this article about her while she's just living her life, doing what they do. And they, they have this kind of love-hate relationship where obviously they start to hate each other. But then the more they talk, this is more in your how to lose a guy in 10 days type of scenario. Like they, 
they build, the relationship builds and they start singing Benny and the Jets. And I don't know why that always sticks in my head. And then it's a do they all don't they? You know, it's, yeah, she starts to realise her boss is a do. She's always just used her for all intents and never realised that he cared, she cared. And then it's do they all don't they? I shouldn't love it, but I do. It's just one of those films that's forever been my movie. I don't want to hate on it either. I just love it. There's something charming about this film that I can't not love. <laughs> it's just that way. It's it's easy watch. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just a very easy watch. Some people might watch and be like, "Oh my days!" But for me, nah, come on. We've That's all got easy. easy watches that we put on. Cool. Um, I haven't seen it, but I, I, this is not the sort of film I would say no to. Yeah, I'd sooner watch this than Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom ever. Again. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> Fact, okay. mate. Okay, you number, number four. four. Let's go international. En France, mon ami. Amélie. I have not seen this film. <gasps> really? Oh, what? Good. I've not seen, but there was a French film I should have put on. You've not seen Amélie? <laughs> Taxi? No, 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 no. Quoi? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. But to be fair, it's more of a family comedy than everything. Qu'est-ce qu'on a fait bon Dieu? Which is like, what have we yeah. done to God? And like, Oh, anyway, I'll let you do this film. I'll, I'll do it as an honourable because I've now mentioned it. But yeah, I'll let I'll Emily hear it. Emily is absolutely beautiful. It is visually one of the most stunning movies ever created. I stand by that. The colours they use in this, the vibrance, the richness of the world she's in is absolutely incredible. It is essentially just a very simple kind of real-to-life fairy tale of a girl's daily routine through Paris. She's got this childlike wonder of, of, of her outlook on life. You know, she, she does things like ponders how many women at this present moment in time are having an orgasm in Paris. And then the movie will cut to just girls going, ah, ah, ah. and then she'll look at the camera and go, set you know <laughs> that's the kind of tone we're going for right set meaning seven in case you're not speaking french sorry and it just shows various segments of her adult life it starts with her as a child and how she used to troll people and how how some experiences in life nothing bad but how some experiences in life formed her there's nothing dark or horrible in this this is a very very happy uplifting movie um but it's about while she's kind of playing Cupid slash guardian angel for the whole world around her, what does she have? That's mm. the big question. So, you know, she works in this cafe and there's one of the waitresses who has a stalker, but she manages to turn that frown upside down and turn the stalking into actual a viable relationship. So she's very much a kind of modern living embodiment of Cupid. And the world she lives in and the way she sees the world very much reflects that. But it's not one of those invasive kind of like couple cunts. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> one of those uh, one of those uh, couple what's it's because <clears throat> you know how some people try to like manage people's lives because, oh, I could, I could make you two be to get shut up. She does it in a very unassuming, gentle and loving way lovely way but the movie does kind of tease with the fact yeah but what do you have to show you're such an ex not an expert she's not a hitch or anything you know she's you're not a love you're a love guru but you're not not even a guru she's just got a good heart and she knows how to see the good in people and make people see the good in each other I wouldn't i wouldn't even call it a guru because it's not something she actively tries to do it's just something she just does do. it does it, it just happens by by happenstance you know and the movie kind of halfway through does a spin and you're like, well, what does Emily have? And then she forms this, again, very fairy tale like romance with Maciej Kasowicz. Yes, the same guy who directed La N is in Emily, if you can believe that. And it's beautiful. It's charming. It's endearing. It's Paris as you've never seen it before. AJ, you should watch this for an upcoming list. Um it, it, it's impossible to watch Amelie and not fall in love with it. It's beautiful. Do you know what's weird? And I, I, I don't, don't know why. There's this and the film Chocolat that always, like, mm. for some reason, they're linked to me. I think they might have come out around the same time. I always kind of, like, blur the two films. And I've 
just not seen either. But I have no reason to have not seen either. Is the yeah? I mean, great, 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 great. Your number three. My number three. I don't think it's a punt. I don't know. Normally it would be a punt, but it's always mid like around this territory for me. Love actually. Uh, it's also my number three. Hey, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I, mean, I appreciate the fact that you took a post of that matrix. I was back. gonna say, Kira's all there for you. <laughs> that's that's always that. That's the ultimate thing for me. As long as Kira Knightley's on the poster, we have no beef. Um, She's hardly in the damn movie. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> she's appreciated. One, of the, one of the all time beautiful women. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just one of those ensemble movies and I always say it and I I think we've spoken about this so many times but there's one line I always have to quote I always have to quote it it's the opening line defines the film Hugh Grant who says when, I, well, no, it's, when he says when I want to picture happiness I picture the arrival gate at um, Heathrow Airport and it, how people are connected and essentially that's what the film's about love actually is and it just shows you the various different ways that each person in this ensemble cast has a different meaning of love whether it's a bromance whether it's a romance whether it's for cheating whether it's betrayal whether it's loss whether it's just acceptance of anything un un you know different social um ladder the scales of the ladder meeting and happen to be over there international love it's just every version of it being shown and appreciated and I think it's amazing for what it is. Like that, that's me encapsulating it very quickly. And if it's just you don't love love, actually, your view on love is very simplistic and unnuanced, and you must be American. I will say no more. Love actually is amazing. I would go with that. I I, I have a lot of love for this film, and it's it's always gonna rank <laughs> my film screen dudes. Because yes, it's always uh, the American critics who bash this out. Oh, I can't believe they did that in the muse. And oh, this is so creepy. It's like, yes, people do dumb things when they're in love. Mr. Squeaky Clean. <laughs> so easy, watching. isn't it? <clears throat> when people slam these movies, it's like, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's some context. <clears throat> Every one of us, you, you, me, all of us, all our boys, we don't tell each other the dumb stuff we've done for some Junani. We all done some dumb stuff for the Junani. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know I've done some dumb stuff. You don't know <laughs> what I've done, but you know I've done some dumb stuff. But well, you've done some dumb stuff that I'm aware of, and there's some others I will never find out. And you know what? I salute you for it. I don't want to know because you this don't need it. to know what I've done. This is done. it. <laughs> Not a single person on this planet, short of being a Mormon or a eunuch or a very boring American. Um, no, but I'm saying it, bro, because it's always the same bellettons online that I hear the John Rokers of the world just being like, oh, yeah, this film is terrible because it doesn't show real love. Bro, what is real love? Love is complicated. Love is nuanced. Love is doing stuff you regret. Love is doing things that throw friendships out the window. Love is taking risks that are uncalculated and that you don't think through and that you're hoping for the best because you're thinking with that or with that. And it usually doesn't pan out the way you want, other than maybe getting a cheeky kiss in the muse from a married woman who you can never be with. Suck a fat one. <laughs> Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> that guy was a legend. He's great. That guy was a legend. Yeah. Okay. In at number two, mm. protect your face because it's Slappy McSlapperson. Yes. The Fresh Prince himself, Will Smith. In Hitch, I never thought I damn that, that high, huh? Do you know again, very similar to Bridget Jones' territory. This film was one that just got worn out of a DVD. Plus, between this and my number one, I think you'll realize I I, I like the wingman who, who could show someone. I I, I think yes, I can you see do, you, don't you? <laughs> I'm very much look. There's one thing that my boy has told me too many times in life, and most people will see it as, even by silver screen standards, that's if you see it that way, and people who know me will say it. You're too kind. You're too soft. You give it away too easy. You keep putting it on the pedestal. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> these films. <laughs> You're not <laughs> thinking. <laughs> <my movie. laughs> 
<laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's it, I can and I've seen it and I'm like you watch some of the stuff you go oh no you shouldn't do that and you're like but, but I'm guilty of doing that at the same time and that's how I kind of feel about like the opening of Hitch Will Smith was the guy who just gave too much away and then learned how to play the game and he's now become this as we talked about previously love guru the man who women are not to know about he's the one who knows how to set up and, and make any man get any girl and who pull the curtain back and he's just as incompetent as the rest of us exactly exactly that's what happens but you know while while we realize that he's flawed he's also making kevin james where is kevin james that guy was good and then vanished he had king of queens he done this and then he done paul blart more cop and that was it yeah put him on you put him on a segue and it killed it all um yeah so he's there getting him to go for the amazing Allegra Cole, was that said? Allegra Cole? Cole, well done, great pull, well done. Yeah. And it's like they shouldn't be Where together. Is she going, she was stunning. <laughs> where's Allegra gone? Yeah, forget Kevin James. Where's Allegra gone? This I don't even it. know Allegra's real name. I don't even know Allegra's real name. I know um, Eva Mendes is real name, but yeah, different story, <laughs> yeah, different part do. of the film. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, yeah, so it's it's literally while showing a guy how to pull a girl, and this is the guy who just can't get anything right. He's got a lot of work on his hands, and while he's building this guy, we start to see and that's how why she talked. It was Amber it. Valletta. And what has what is Amber up to now? Well, she's a model, isn't she? Oh, so she's just model. She doesn't act. No. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. Oh, to be fair, she wasn't exactly Oscar winning in the film. She she had a few lines. I'm not hating on it. She was good at the film, but yes, yeah. Now I understand why she didn't have a lot of lines. <laughs> it just makes sense. It's sort of right. really close. Um, yeah, and that's the side. We see like while you feel you know it all, you may not. And like even though you can sway stuff, sometimes life gets in the way of your masterful plan. And that's what we see in that film. I remember having a lot of fun with this film. A lot of fun with it, so. Yeah, this is the day when I wasn't afraid to say, "Yeah, Will's the man." I it's felt like he was highly ranked. It's I really enjoyed it. Yeah, really. It, it so did I. I don't know if I'd put it that high, but it, it yeah, this would have been kind of At seven. First, bear in mind, it was about three or four, but again, quite high. <laughs> but when the original American Pie was like, "That's not really the romantic comedy." So then, yeah, a couple of something else got rearranged as well. So it was around the three to four mark, maybe five. But okay, yeah number two so this one came to me my number two is like a flash of lightning right at the last minute and i was like oh my god of course it's a freaking romantic comedy i, I think i know where you're going because i nearly had it in if it's the same film deadpool yes 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 of um, course in the it's same a romantic way, comedy they even the part of their marketing campaign was making yeah, this romantic way, comedy people say die hard is in a christmas movie that's what that's what i love about ryan he's like i'm gonna play on that I'm going to give yeah. you a Valentine's Day movie that's not a Valentine's Day movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it absolutely well, is because the, 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 the literally the crux of the whole movie is this really sweet, lovely relationship, as effed up as it is, because they're both effed up people, between him and Marina Baccarin. Yeah. Oh, gosh, she's stunning as well. What is it with the hot women in the world, man? Um, <laughs> Too many. We should do like Doctor Strange and have one for every ten. <laughs> and sign me up, <laughs> right? I pick Amber and Jessica and Allegra and na, na, na. <laughs> dude. So yeah, the, the fact that they have that sex montage where it's like happy this day, happy that day. The one I personally love is oh, the Happy Woman's Day when she's <laughs> pegging him. <I> know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, and you know. Bad things happen to him, but ultimately his key driver for the whole movie, even after he's been all cancered up, is still getting back to her. You know, yeah. he yeah. wants to save her at the end. I'm never gonna dance again. You know, <laughs> it's all about her. The whole thing is a really messed up love story, just told through the prism of two very effed up people. Yeah. Dead, but I know I know that Campia ruined it for you by overhyping it. I, this remains one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. I thought they nailed this so pitch perfectly. Yeah, I, I loved it. The, the comedic tone of it, 
It's the now only might movie. Might be the right time for me to rewatch it. It's weird to say that, but I feel like now might be the time. Like I think enough years have passed that I might have been. I'm aware of what I'm looking for. Because don't get me wrong, I really like Deadpool too. But like, oh, I much prefer one. Yeah, I, but listen, I, most people do. Most people do. I'm aware I'm very much on a solitary island here, but like, I'm willing to give it another shot and see what it is. And yeah, it's not to say two is bad. It's just uh, it, it didn't. Listen, listen, you could always have a better film. It's, it's yeah, just what it is. Exactly. But basically, I'm yet to see a bad Deadpool movie. Disney, don't yeah. let me down now. Exactly. That, that's the um, yeah. Look, I I love it. I love their relationship. And yeah, you know, you talk about people who were born to play a role. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't have a worst, but I've seen you do. At first, I didn't, and now I do. And I'm I'm going to be like really cautious because I think Rebel Wilson has a film on Netflix, which was absolute horse crap. And I watched like five minutes of it. Sounds about right. That's that's it. Very similar to, and this was actually a like Uno reverse card. In the same breath that I showed someone Serendipity, and they were like, no, but that's not right. They showed me this film and thought it was funny. And I just was like, I don't find it funny. And it really hurt me because the name of the film is the name of my favorite wrestler. Yes, we are talking <laughs> the Heartbreak Kid. Uh, ben Stiller is the Heartbreak Kid. And the, oh God. No, I take it back. I take it back. I absolutely 100% take it back. There is a worse film. By the time this comes out, you will see the image. Shallow Hat. Let me make sure it's the right year. If it Hall feels like a 90s movie. It, uh, if he, 2001. Shallow Hal is my worst romantic comedy of all time. I despise that film with every fiber of my being. I think it's the most disgusting film I've ever seen. While everyone was like, it's really funny. Oh my God, he's, he's a fat girl, but it's quite a foul I thought it was so offensive. And I feel like now people are going to be on my side because Gen Z are that way inclined about body shaming and everything. I never, ever found Was he film body like... shaming or he was just not into fat girls? No, but that's the thing. When the curse is on her, because of her personality, now she's Gwyneth Paltrow. So then, w w what? Screw it. Like, the whole thing to me was disgusting. Like, if you're going to give someone a shot, you give them a shot. No, I thought it was disgusting. Like, you're literally saying beauty has to be, and don't get me wrong, Gwyneth Paltrow is not an ugly woman, right? No. But all of these girls, and then, really and then when it comes to the... The whole thing of he couldn't carry her, like, oh my god, how are you so heavy? Like, why? Oh, you're trying to be so funny. Yeah, like he's trying to be sensitive to her. Then when the curse is broken, it's like, but you can't be her. No way. Oh my god. Oh, now I understand that. And the, the biggest part that troubles me with Shallow How, mm. with the highest of respect, Jack Black is no freaking oil painted. This is coming from me. I'm not trying to say I'm better looking than Jack Black. I know for a hundred percent that he's probably laid a whole lot more than I have. And well done to you, Jack. But don't try, like, if we'd done Shallow Hell and potential, I'm not saying they would defend it because I still feel- He's also probably like, paid for it a lot more than yeah. you have. Come again? He's also probably paid for it a lot more than you have. I've never <laughs> paid for it. So yes, even if he paid for one, he's paid for a lot more than I have. I mean, in a relationship, yes, you pay, but I've never paid for it in that sense. But yeah, but like 100%, I'm not dumbing it down by, oh, if it was Brad Pitt, it might be a bit more acceptable. I mean, you would you would kind of get it because this is, for God's sakes, it's, it's Achilles himself. <laughs> like, I get it, but no, I thought this film was it. This I was disgusted by it. The whole inner <laughs> beauty. I I I, I like. I, I'm a person who gives everyone the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not saying I thought this is going to sound bad. I've fallen for others. It's up to you, whichever way you want to brand it or whatever. But I just thought the whole thing of yeah, <laughs> this girl. Shut your mouth. <laughs> this girl is Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I didn't even go there. Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Right? Like, I, like, no. I, I was disgusted by it from beginning to, I just thought, no, nah, hated it. Hated it. I need to rewatch it, man, and see it through the prism that you hate it, because I don't, Shadow Hell never put me in stitches, but I never remembered hating it the way you were describing. I, I never liked the concept. 
Why should that be a thing? Now, I'm aware I'm a man of... He a seems size. beauty inside to stop judging people for how they appear on the outside. Like, what is wrong with that? No, I find it disgusting. And again, maybe well, it's the wrong thing. Kind of beauty, but, looking for inner beauty when someone's actually quite chubbers and ugly. Yeah, but why should you have to see it that way? Why well, should you have to see it? I, I get what the message is meant to be, but I think it's delivered poorly. Because, because if you... If, for better or worse, we all know what attraction is, and I know it. I'm 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 not Dwayne Johnson. I get that. I'm not Wesley Snipes. I get that. I'm closer to the guy up in like couples retreat. I know where I stand on the Richter scale. I get it. <laughs> Shut up, man. No, but I get what I'm trying. Like, I know what I'm saying, and maybe that's why I'm a bit defensive. But I I just don't like the concept that you have to be. And with the highest respect to Gwyneth once again, stick thin to be deemed beautiful. You can be a slightly bigger person or slightly off on appearance and still be worthy of attention. And to have this guy, and I think maybe oh, it's the I see what you're getting at. Okay. It's the fact that the pretty girl happened to also be a skinny girl. I just thought it was completely wrong the whole way it's portrayed. Especially Would and you I have thought it was. it was less wrong if she was sort of Danny Luna build? Don't play with me with Danny. You know this. I'm going to play with you with Danny because Danny's the thick girl that I can get down with. Yeah, listen, my whole thing behind it is There's I just didn't. Danny Luna, who is thick, like Danny Luna is not a skinny girl, but one would. <laughs> but Danny Luna is also not thick like fat Gwyneth in this film. So I get it. I just, I just, I just didn't, I just, I just didn't like, the, I didn't appreciate the concept. Nah, man. Okay, I need like, to rewatch. Was... I, I, it's been too long since I've seen it. I need to rewatch it before I, I no, go. Listen, it, it, it's a it's a body shaming movie. There's no in between on it, and I get that some people might be. Able is to it? Look it. Yes, I don't dig fat. Chick and the thing is, look at the way he plays it. The whole thing about him is, <laughs> yeah, nah, good luck. And I'm like, bro, no, 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 not you. I've wasted too much time on this film. But that's literally so many men, AJ. Bro, I know. We've got this inflated says, ego know. and believe that there's some gift that they're we not. Oh all know beauty is skin deep, yeah? Anyone who said beauty's on the inside, I, I'm very aware that I'm being a hypocrite in what I'm saying here because there's no way I go from, oh, Allegra Cole, oh, Kira Knightley, oh, Eva Mendes, and now try to defend Biggie, all right? I get what I'm saying. <laughs> I can't remember the girl's name. I can't, yeah? But again... I sound like such a prat right now. But I, I just didn't appreciate it being a concept of a movie. I I, I, I couldn't. And this is, if we're going to quote Danny Luna, you also heard me be a, a, an unabashed defender of Nia Jax at times. And we're not going to get into discussion of wrestling and who's hot and who's not. But I just felt like I didn't appreciate the concept of it. And it was like, that's that's ugly. And that's why you're, you're not entitled to a chance. But once I see you like that, look... Enough time wasted. I'm repeating myself, but I hate each other. Hell. <laughs> Fair enough. What's your number one? Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Because it goes back to I, I've watched. I couldn't think of one. But, yeah. It's um, it's the punt. Funny enough, it's Steve Carell. And we both put Steve Carell at number six, but for different reasons. And here we go. At number one. Yeah. Oh, da, 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 da. here we go. My ensemble movie. It's just what comes to my head whenever I think of it. Crazy, stupid love. And as I said, it's the wingman movie. <laughs> You've got Steve Carell, who's there with Julianne Moore in a relationship early on. They're at dinner, and then she confesses that she wants a divorce. And he's trying to not accept that. Like, what do you mean, a divorce? And then she keeps going. He's like, please stop, please stop. To the degree that she admits that she slept with someone else, that he jumped out of a moving car. And... Now he's just a man forever sorry for himself, just forever talking about David Lynn Huggins. David Lynn Huggins taught my wife. Do you know who's probably not alone and like lonesome right now? David Lynn Huggins. And enter the Messiah that is Ryan Gosling, the wingman. He's like, do you know why people don't give a damn? Because for the past three days, that's all I've ever heard you talk about. And he levels this guy the hell up. And that's that. But in the same breath, kind of similar to Hitch, we start to learn that even Ryan has problems. And then we start to see other people's relationships. We can see Steve Carell's son who has a crush on the babysitter, but the babysitter has a crush on Steve Carell. And it's, it's all kinds of madness. And then Everstone and Ryan Gosling, for me, it was their first time linking up. A lot of people said La La Land was a romantic comedy. I was like, don't see it. Definitely not a comedy. Yeah. Romantic tragedy, yeah. not a comedy. 
Yeah, romantic musical even, but not not romantic comedy. But that came up a lot. No, but, yeah, this, not this was comedy. my first Emma Stone and um, Gosling um, pairing, and I loved it. And I've loved them every other film that they've done together, La La Land, and that Chicago version of The Untouchables. Not Chicago, whatever. Yeah, that was also a great film that they kind of just appear in together. But yeah. All these different stories in. Does it connect? How does it connect? Marissa Tomei's in there for two minutes, then she pops back up, and you're like, oh! great stuff, great stuff. I love this film, yeah, dude. It, it, the plot twist, fantastic plot <laughs> twist as well. Without yeah. going into it, my number one is also Steve Carell, and was also your number six, which we punted on. So you've seen it. It's the forty-year-old virgin. Uh, AJ, this isn't just my favorite romantic comedy of the 21st century, it's my favorite romantic comedy ever. This for me is top three comedy of all time territory for me. I cannot tell you how much I love the 40 year old virgin. It's weird for how much I've watched it, how much I've blurred. Like, I always say every time we do these shows, if I ever watch it again, it probably boosts itself right up higher because it was a so good. Like his performance is brilliant. The se- the the setups they have are great. The ensemble cast with Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd, even little Kevin Hart. <laughs> I mean, little Kevin Hart. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Elizabeth Banks is in this. She's great. You know, Catherine Kinnear is in this. She's great. It's just it's so good, and it's just it, it shines a light on how we all put so much importance on sex. And then along comes the Virgin who kind of just levels the playing field and not through any form of trying, but just by circumstance shows people that, hey, this stuff actually isn't that important, guys. Like, do I want to get some? Yeah, absolutely, I want some. But like, the, the, the lengths you guys are going to to get freaky deaky is like, dude, and you know, it, it's so my personal favorite is when he goes, The only thing you have to do to speak to a woman is go and talk to her and ask her questions right back. Her, How are you doing? How are you doing? Can I help you with something? I don't know. Can you help me with something? Well, we've got a great selection of books. Do you like to read? Uh, sometimes, if the mood takes me. How is the mood taking you right now? Uh, well, here's my number. You can call me. And then Steve Carell walks away going, ha, ha. <laughs> and Seth Rogen's just like, that's just what I'm telling you, man. you got to plant the seed, and it's like a plant. And then you beep the plant. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that, because it reminds me of that scene in um, Crazy Stupid Love, where they're like, let her tell you a story. Yeah. Or tell the story. You have to tell it. And they're all talking, and he's like, yeah, that doesn't interest me. Boring! And he completely just flops it. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 like that. With cool, yeah. yeah. Steve Carell is a master at, it, at playing the underdog. He really, he is. really, really, really is. And and the setup for the whole story is so good because none of his work colleagues find out for the first act that he is, in fact, a 40-year-old virgin. And then they find out that he is and they all go on this kind of their own missions to try and pop his cherry. And it just, it all goes very, very, very wrong. To the degree where the time he finally... <laughs> the condoms with Catherine Kenner. It's, it's so funny. She's like in the bathroom and he's like, hey, do you have any condoms? And she's like, yeah, in the drawer. He takes out this massive basket of condoms and he's like, can I open your magnum? And she's like, yeah, sure. He puts it on his hand. He's like, I am Aquaman. <laughs> He ends up with them like on his fingers, on his nose, and he's like, "Where does the penis go?" <laughs> the son walks in, and it's going on his nose, and he's just kind of like, and his son's just like, "Dude, reach me." <laughs> oh man. Oh, me. Woody Harrelson's in this for a cameo as well, playing a transgender. Uh, it's, uh, play, no, is this what is no, this is anger management. I'm mixing it up with which Woody Harrelson's in the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I feel like dancing. <laughs> so good. He, he, is, he is funny at that one. Oh, yeah. uh, but yeah, man, 40 year old virgin, just top to bottom. 
the deadpan comedy, every single scene she seems to have something to laugh. <laughs> like when Paul Rudd has his breakdown in the in the in the electronic store and he starts filming his own ass and he's <laughs> putting it on all the TV monitors. This is what a breakdown looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Every single scene has something to offer. It's just great. Uh, the, the porno, like, it just. It is good. You no, know, I know you're gay. Oh, it's so good. It's so funny. Oh, it's good. Oh, God. Love it. Yes. Should we do a rush more? So here's the thing. Technically, is it made? Yes. Because I don't think Couples Retreat will win anyway. No. You agree? <laughs> right. So we do have Crazy Stupid Love, 40 Year Old Virgin, yeah, Bridget also. Jones, Love Actually. Love Actually. Crazy <laughs> Stupid Love. <sighs> See, there's two sides of me here, and I'll be mm -hmm. honest. We lock it in as is, but then it's two Corels. But I am interested to see which Corel is appreciated more. I kind of believe it's 40 year old virgin. I think and so. With, but you never know. With, that's the thing. I'm intrigued to see how it's taken. The other side of me is willing to sacrifice one, which would probably have to be my one. In order to see what Deadpool does. Uh, not fair. Deadpool will kill it. Okay, then let's leave it. There's no this. point. I think you've, we've got a really good one there. Let's, let's, let's leave it. There's no this. point even going to, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you've literally read out the Rushmore already. That's yeah, the Rushmore. Yeah. Um, cool. Wrap it up. Cool, guys. So there it is. Please head on over to X at Movie Empty Rushmore. And more importantly, at Movie Polls for You, fronted by good old JT of We Love Movies. Next week, you will find out the winner. And again, it's season seven, baby. Go back and check some of the old ones if you wish to, but more than anything. Just, just look, keep keep doing what you're doing and tuning in to us. We are eternally grateful. So please do like, please do subscribe, and please do share and comment as well. A few comments don't hurt. It's, it's always appreciated to be able to have a comment and see what's what. So there it is. But do on head on over to either of the X pages and do the vote. And next week, we will crown the ultimate romantic comedy of the 21st century. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, guys, so just stay tuned to the channel throughout the week. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone, whether you're with someone, whether you're alone, whether you're platonic, platonic, whatever you're doing, have a nice day. If you're alone, eat yeah. chocolate and ice cream and pizza and do all the wonderful things to make you happy. I don't know, man. Just there's a lot of love to give in the world and there's a lot of love in these movies. Enjoy. And if you're in the UK, go see One Love because that's out tomorrow. So there, go and enjoy that. <laughs> After you've seen the Iron Claw review for that on the channel right now, got the link. But in that's now. not love. Well, it's a different kind of love. Anyway, we out. Brotherly love. We out. See ya. <laughs>